That was the trailer from the film The Central Park Five. To talk more about the reported new $40 million settlement with the five men, which, by the way, still has to be approved by the city controller and the judge, we're joined by Natalie Byfield. She was a reporter for The New York Daily News at the time of the Central Park Five case. She's now an associate professor of sociology at St. John's University in Queens, and she has a new book out. It's called Savage Portrayals, Race, Media and the Central Park Jogger Story. Natalie Byfield, welcome back to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of what at least is the reported $40 million settlement. The significance of a settlement to me is important because it starts to undo what became a historic lie. And I say it in this way because the case itself was the launching pad for a transformation of the juvenile justice system. So after the 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 trials were completed between 1992 and 1999. Almost all the states in the country, with the exception of maybe three or four, transformed their juvenile justice laws to incorporate more juveniles into the adult court system. So this case was really quite a launching pad for a very quiet sea change in the juvenile justice system. So the, the settlement is an institutional acknowledgment that this was a serious mistake. This was a problem. And we have to undo those historic lies so that they don't get trans continue to help to transform the society. Now, Natalie, uh, we were both colleagues at the Daily News at the time of, of the case and attended the trial. And uh, you delve in your book into the role of the media in, in building up the hysteria and the and uh, amplifying the mistakes that were made by the police department in this case. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk about that, because this is really the Scottsboro case of our time uh, and uh, in, in terms of what happened here and the role that the media played in inflaming public opinion. If you could talk about that some, too. The, the, re the media played a, a variety of roles, actually, in it. it, it, it it occurred in the context of the language that was used. And this is the part that was discussed quite a bit. We, we remember very well terms like wilding, terms like savage. And this case was, in fact, the case that was used to invent this concept of wilding. We hadn't—it hadn't appeared in our lexicon, certainly not in journalism, before this case. So this helped to inflame public passions, certainly, the type of language that was used. In addition to the, the language that was used, the media just simply failed to interrogate the police. It failed to act as an independent body in the context of the, the case. So it acted as a mouthpiece for the police department, in essence. So when the police or the district attorney presented evidence about hairs that matched or were consistent with the hairs of the jogger, and then the evidence sort of appeared and disappeared, there was no interrogation. There were no stories following up on this. When there were reports of a knife being used and then suddenly the district attorney's office or the police are not saying anything else about a knife anymore. The things that appeared and disappeared were not interrogated at all. And let's remember, these were 14 to 16-year-old kids.